everyone. Uh, welcome to free crash course on competitive exams held by Virat Hindustan Sangam in association with Manifest IAS. This program is inspired by Dr. Subramaniam Swami and is convened by Sri Ravi Shankar sir who is a state education convener for VHS Karnataka and also president of Good Neighbors India NGO. So I am the chief mentor of your program Danush Kumar. And you can watch this program online on the YouTube channel of Virat Hindustan Sangam and also on the YouTube channel of Udya News Karnataka. For any further queries, doubts, guidance, mentorship, anything you want regarding to any competitive exam, you can join our Telegram channel VHS Education Forum. Just type VHS Space Education Space Forum on the Telegram channel and you will be able to join, join us. So we are negotiating the economic part of the syllabus. It's bit in detail because economy is full of concepts. So it will take some more classes. That's okay. But we want to do justice to what we are teaching. Right. Okay. So it is useful as I have been saying it is useful for both freshers and veteran senior aspirants. Both of them can make you good use of this program. Okay. So the source for your Indian economy is Indian economy by Sri Ram Sri Dangam. If you are studying in English. Okay. We are dealing with the chapter of taxation. Taxation. Right. So every, I said, every nation, every government worth its name as a or need taxation. Because they have to spend on social schemes, infrastructure, military spending, in order to run the administration, so many things. So, every government needs taxation. So, uh, we have discussed the basic concepts, indirect tax, direct tax, all those things in the previous class. Today, we will discuss the tax amnesty schemes. Uh, I told you, the tax to GDP ratio in India is just 11%. Tax to GDP ratio is just 11%. And also, if uh, there are 6.3 crore tax filers, there are just 1.3 crore people who pay the taxes. So, there is lot of black money. Black money, which means for which there is no tax, no tax has been paid for that money. So, in order to streamline the black money, in order to bring the black money into the mainstream, mainstream economy, tax amnesty schemes has been devised. So it is the meaning of tax amnesty scheme is suppose you have not paid any tax, you have not paid any tax, you can legalize your earnings, you can legalize your earnings by paying a fine or interest along with the required tax. You have to pay the fine, interest and required tax to the government and thereby you will be able to legalize your income. So amnesty means it is just like mafi. Government is going to give you mafi, but you have to pay your taxes along with some fine and interest. So there are many schemes with respect to tax uh, uh, tax uh, amnesty. So, so the first scheme, so during the demonetization, so the one of the main purpose of the demonetization is to weed out black money from the economy. There was a lot of black money to remove the black money from the economy. Demonetization was done. So one of the goals. So, uh, after that, after that, the government came in with a scheme called income declaration scheme. Income declaration scheme. Suppose you have an unauthorized income for which you have not paid taxes, for which you cannot show any account. So, you can legalize that income by under this, by paying a fine. Income declaration scheme 2016 bought in after the demonetization. Along with that, uh, at the same time, uh, along with income declaration scheme, government also bought in Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana 2016. Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana 2016. So, PMGKY. So, under this, you have to deposit some money in the social welfare schemes or social welfare fund for which you are not going to get any interest. You have to deposit your illegal money or some a certain percentage of your ill-gotten money into a fund for which no interest will be paid and it will be returned to you after four years. So this is the concept of 
प्रधान मंत्री गरीब कल्याण योजना सो यू हैव टू पे योर टैक्सेस फर्स्ट यू हैव टू पे योर टैक्सेस अलॉन्ग विद दैट इंटरेस्ट इंटरेस्ट अक्रूड ऑन द टैक्स सपोज यू हैव टू पे हंड्रेड रुपीज ऑफ टैक्स सो दे वुड लेवी सम एटीन परसेंट इंटरेस्ट पर इयर सो इफ यू डिनाइड द इफ यू आर नॉट पेड द टैक्सेस फॉर वन इयर द अमाउंट विल कम अप टू हंड्रेड एंड एटीन रुपीज प्लस ए फाइन यू हैव टू फिल ए फाइन इन ऑर्डर टू लीगलाइज यूर इनकम राइट सो दिस इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पीएमजीकेवाई नेक्स्ट अनदर स्कीम इज सबका विश्वास लेगेसी डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन स्कीम सबका विश्वास लेगेसी डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन स्कीम दिस स्कीम इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस इट इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस सो वॉट इज इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस आर ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू सो बिफोर कमिंग ऑफ जीएसटी देर यूज टू बी वैट इज टू बी देर एक्साइज ड्यूटी बी यूज टू देर एक्साइज ड्यूटी लेविड ऑन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कस्टम्स ड्यूटी लेविड ऑन इम्पोर्ट्स एंड ऑल्सो सेल्स टैक्स एट द sales tax or vat at the state level so these used to be so lot of these tax disputes used to get stuck in the court proceedings so the income tax department or the indirect taxes department used to send notices to the tax payers that you have not paid the taxes so they have to respond within certain time but what certain people what they used to do with large amount of fine they used to file a case in the court they used to file cases in the court so those cases there was lot of cases lot of disputes between the tax department and the public so in order to resolve these disputes in order to resolve these disputes this scheme was brought in sabka vishwas legacy dispute regular resolution scheme 2019 indirect taxes so it gives certain benefits or privileges what privileges one is if you pay the taxes if you pay the taxes you need you, you need not pay any fine we can resolve the dispute outside the court outside the court we will resolve the dispute and you need not pay any taxes you need not pay any taxes right so that is the concept so it it deals with legacy taxes legacy taxes means old taxes old disputes before the gst those were called legacy taxes i told you excise duty customs duty all those things and it gives amnesty amnesty so the, there are two principles under this sabka vishwas legacy dispute resolution the first principle is amnesty amnesty means maafi and second uh, this thing is dispute resolution once you settle the dispute outside the court the resolved dispute is resolved you need not go back to court so these are the two principles under this scheme and if you settle the dispute under this scheme there is one benefit see earlier if you have avoided the taxes you are prone to or you are bound to go to jail right under criminal cases tax evasion is a criminal case right so it is a civil case but if you civil case if you use the ta uh, tax evasion for money laundering terrorism then it gets converted to criminal case so generally it is a civil case so you even even under civil case you can go to jail so but under this scheme there will be no prosecution no prosecution but there is one negative of this scheme there is one negative about this scheme what is the negative andre there is a moral hazard what is moral hazard it means see for non tax payers non tax payers we are giving them provision that you pay the taxes and legalize your income but this will demoralize or this will make the people genuine tax payers who are regularly paying the taxes for them they will lose the confidence they will lose the confidence they will think that even if we don't pay taxes it is okay government will bring in some scheme and we can regularize the income so it will demoralize the genuine tax payers so it is actually against the genuine tax payers genuine tax payers will actually lose the confidence in the system right so this is all about the legacy dispute resolution so apart from this there is one more thing vivad se vishwas scheme vivad se vishwas scheme it is related to direct taxes direct taxes relation is vivad se vishwas scheme under this scheme uh, if there is any direct tax dispute corporate tax wealth tax income tax any dispute with the government under this scheme and that is vivad se vishwas scheme you can regularize the income there is some provision right so next 
ऑपरेशन क्लीन मनी वन एंड टू वॉट इज दिस ऑपरेशन क्लीन मनी वन एंड टू सी ड्यूरिंग द डिमोनिटाइजेशन ड्यूरिंग डिमोनिटाइजेशन देर वॉज लॉट ऑफ कैश डिपोजिट लॉट ऑफ कैश डिपोजिट सी दिस गवर्नमेंट एड ए प्रॉपर प्लान दे वॉन्टेड टू वीड आउट द इलीगल मनी सो वॉट दे डिड वेन दे डिड दिस डिमोनिटाइजेशन लॉट ऑफ इलीगल मनी वॉज ऑल्सो डिपोजिटेड so slowly what uh, until then the it department was sleeping so it uh, immediately got into action it started sending notices to people so if you have to deposit a money above so let there was a uh, threshold if you deposit some above 4000 or 5000 you have to give your pan card or something like that so it started sending notices to people saying that how did you get this money how did you get this money so uh with this uh, operation clean money 1 and 2 is exclusively related to illegal cash deposits so phase 1 is operation clean money 1 phase 2 is operation clean money 2 there are two phases right okay this is if you know this much about operation clean money then it is more than sufficient so next concept comes that direct tax code this is very very important there is lot of demand for direct tax code lot of demand for direct tax code why see we bought in gst for indirect taxes but direct taxes there are so many provisions so many laws so many rules so there is actually a confusion confusion regarding direct taxes right who is going to pay the taxes to whom the taxes are paid how is it distributed among the state and center so many things so if there is a dispute how it will be resolved so just like gst if we if we can bring in a proper law for direct taxes there is a provision there is a demand that demand is this direct tax code so it tries to replace see income tax actually is paid under there is a income tax act 1961 income tax act 1961 it act is not information technology act income tax act 1961 so if you are paying income tax to government under this provision only government will collect taxes it act 1961 so this direct tax uh, direct tax code is proposed to replace the it act it is proposed to replace the it act okay and also to simplify to simplify the payment of taxes see earlier if you are paying uh, the income taxes there used to be a bundle of or a large booklet of uh, documentation you have to fill each and every line it used to be very very hectic so now government has uh, simplified it simplified it there is a only one page you have to fill and you can file your taxes right so it also aims to direct tax codes also aims to simplify the tax filing procedure so along with that Uh, along with that direct tax only when it comes to direct tax there are lot of reforms lot of reforms along with direct tax code what are the reforms one is wealth tax so earlier there used to be wealth tax now wealth tax is abolished there is no wealth tax if your income is more than 1 crore you have to pay a surcharge surcharge is there there is no wealth tax now so that is abolished then co corporation tax corporation tax in 2019 it was reduced from 30% to 25% now corporation tax see suppose i was talking to my one of my friend in us so there the ta corporation tax is 35% so it is one of the highest corporation taxes that is why all this uh, apple google all these companies their headquarters is in ireland because ireland so because if the headquarters is in usa they have to pay a lot of taxes 35% is huge money it is almost more than one third of the income right and also income tax is 40% there income tax is 40% in california in the state of california the income tax is 40% if you earn 100 rupees 40 rupees goes to government right so uh, in india how much is the income tax the highest slab is 30% so it starts from 10% from 10% it goes up to 15 20 25 30 right so that is the highest so okay next corporation tax is reduced to 25% yes 
and along with that there is a general anti avoidance rule anti avoidance see this corporation tax even if even though we have lessened it to 25 percent there are there are countries uh, tax havens tax havens andre it is a heaven for tax there is no tax so there are countries where uh, this uh, uh, see uh, suppose british britain wants to british people or british citizen or british company wants to invest in india so they don't invest directly what they do they go to mauritius which is a tax haven and from mari <coughs> sorry and from mauritius they are going to direct the tax towards india so what happens in this criteria they are trying to avoid the tax because mauritius is a non no tax haven no tax haven or very less tax so if that kind of a plan is there then that is called general anti avoidance rules so to the companies try to avoid paying taxes so what the government does government bought in gar under g20 gar we will discuss what is gar in a, in the in upcoming uh, times okay next is dta double taxation avoidance agreement we will discuss that also it just means see suppose a company is domiciled in india and it was also functioning in singapore right so they have to pay taxes they have to pay taxes both in singapore same product same manufacturing same product they are paying taxes both in singapore and india so to avoid that this agreement we have signed this agreement more than with more than 80 countries so this agreement double taxation avoidance agreement is bought in we will discuss what it is in some time next POM pace of effective management so this criteria is, it says that see there are multinational companies mnc's what is a mnc which has presence over various countries infosys is a mnc though it is india born it has presence over multiple countries right okay so uh, place of effective management i told you double taxation avoidance let us say there is some company which is uh, uh, domiciled or which is functioning in panama and india panama is a tax haven panama where is it central america right panama isthmus gulf of panama yes so panama canal you would have heard it it is important from your geography perspective panama canal all that region greater antilles lesser antilles all that region gulf of mexico very important from your geography perspective right so let us say there is a company in panama there is a company in india same company is functioning at two places so there they have started the company just to avail the tax benefits because panama is a tax haven but majority function is being carried out in india because technology availability human resource availability because of all these reasons majority functions is taking place in india so under this provision place of effective management where is the exact functioning of the company taking place where the function is taking place there only the tax will be paid so this is the concept of place of effective management next with respect to direct tax code the committee name is important it is akhilesh ranjan committee akhilesh ranjan committee yes so it submits its report in 2019 and it aims to reform the 1961 income tax act akhilesh ranjan committee not akhilesh yadav akhilesh ranjan committee is an economist so 1961 act na reform madadakke this committee is formed right okay next we have the capital gains tax what is the concept of capital gains tax capital means what bandavala you put the capital in something you gain the profit upon that profit if a tax is imposed that is capital gains tax right so you invest your money in land and after some years let's say 10 years the money doubles your capital has doubled so you have gained 100% hike on that 100% hike what is the tax that is going to be imposed that is capital gains tax so there are two types of capital gains tax two types one is 
long term capital gain tax and another one is short term capital gain tax ltcg stcg right so long term capital c which is higher is the long term capital gas uh, tax is higher or the short term short term is higher why capital gains tax see this stock market you are investing you are investing your capital short term if they invest what happens they put the money they uh, make profit and immediately leave the country foreigners if suppose foreigners invest the money they put the money in the stock market they take the profit and they leave the country so it is short term so he gida again agate it will lead to speculative investment speculative investment speculation is actually discouraged in capital market speculation andre guesses based on guessing or speculation market ivat bilute market avag bilute us ukraine alli war aitu there is a speculation that stock market crashes so speculation is actually very bad because it is not one one person who is speculating lot of persons will speculate together ukraine crisis suddenly bsc nse fell sensex and nifty 50 fell it is based on speculation see actually there is no issue as such ukraine war agi takshana it does it impact india it will take a, some time but people's mentality that it is going to fall they fear and they fear together that is called speculation speculative investment is actually made in the short term short term so it is actually bad that is why short term capital gains is more to discourage speculative investment right long term capital gains the tax is less because that is good money ivag band ivag hogala it will stay for some time in india yes okay see this long term capital ta uh, gains tax actually uh, was abolished on uh, shares share market alli ltcg was abolished earlier but now it has been reintroduced on equity equity and shares i have told you what is the concept of equity and shares it has been reintroduced on these things next cost inflation index so before uh, knowing this uh, uh, cost inflation so capital gains tax capital see i told you you buy a property and it gets doubled in 10 years is the actual price of the property increases or is it because of inflation actually inflation in the no raise agirutte and also due to actual rise but the tax is levied only on the actual rise not on inflation rise hope you are getting the difference actual rise of the property and inflation rise so inflation rise mele there is no taxation so there is cost inflation index and there will be one index what they do is they are going to deduct from the gains your property is become 100 to 200 rupees but the actual gain is 70 rupees and 30% is inflation 30 rupees so only on that 70 rupees the capital gains tax will be levied not on the rest 30 rupees so inflation is deducted from the gains this is the concept of capital gains tax right okay so now we will talk about inverted duty structure inverted duty structure what is inverted duty structure see this concept is related to import and export import and export see generally i have told you that uh, export should be encouraged because exports bring in foreign exchange export should be encouraged and imports as far as possible should be discouraged I, apart from essential imports like crude oil pharmaceutical medicines all those things apis act, active pharmaceutical ingredients i will discuss that when it comes to ipr so uh, lower taxes on uh, see in order to increase the exports increase the exports the tax has to be low if we reduce the tax exports will increase export tax na reduce mate export increase agutte right and to st to stop the imports we have to increase the import tax import na now nilsa dikke we have to increase the import tax right so aa tar that is normal that is a normal duty structure duty and a tax structure but inverted duty lena agutte lower tax on raw import 
ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಲೋ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಹಾಕ್ತೀವಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮೇಲೆ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪುಟ್ ಐ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಅವಾಗ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎನ್ಕರೇಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕರೇಜ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಬ್ಯಾಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಸೊ ವೈ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಯು ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ರಬ್ಬರ್ ಗುಡ್ಸ್ ರಬ್ಬರ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ರಬ್ಬರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೌತ್ ಏಷ್ಟಿಯನ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಸೌತ್ ಏಷ್ಯನ್ ಮಲೇಷಿಯಾ ಮಯನ್ಮಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಂಡೋನೇಷಿಯಾ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ರಬ್ಬರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೇರ್ ರಬ್ಬರ್ ರಾ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಲೋ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಲೋ ಇದೆ ಬಟ್ ರಬ್ಬರ್ ದು ಫಿನಿಶ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಬರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ರಬ್ಬರ್ ಇಂದ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಫಿನಿಶ್ಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೈ ಸೊ ರಬ್ಬರ್ ಫಿನಿಶ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟೆಡ್ ವೆರ್ ಆಸ್ ರಾ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಎ ಬ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸೇಷನ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ವರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಲೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಮೋರ್ ಇಫ್ ದಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ರಿವರ್ಸ್ಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ವರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ವೈ ದಿಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಫ್ ಟಿ ಎ ಫ್ರೀ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಇಂಪೋಸ್ ಎನಿ ರಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಷನ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಇಂಪೋಸ್ ಟ್ಯಾರಿಫ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಏಷಿಯಾನ್ ಸೊ ಏಷಿಯನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪಂಪ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಗುಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ರೈಟ್ ಟು ಇಂಪೋಸ್ ಎನಿ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ವರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ರೈಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಫ್ರೀ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ರೀಸನ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಂಡಿಚರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಂಡಿಚರ್ ಸಿ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಡಿ ಆನ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಡಿ ಆನ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಮೋಟ್ ಗ್ರೋತ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಮೋಟ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಮೋಟ್ ರೀಜನಲ್ ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಟುಡೆ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಂಪನೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ನೋಯ್ಡಾ ಮುಂಬೈ ಕೋಲ್ಕತ್ತಾ ದೀಸ್ ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟ್ ದ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಪೆಷಿಯಲಿ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಹುಬ್ಳಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಮಂಗಳೂರು ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೈಸೂರು ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಟೈರ್ ಟು ಅಂಡ್ ಟೈರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ರೀಜನಲ್ ಸ್ಟೆಬಿಲಿಟಿ ರೀಜನಲ್ ರೀಜನಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಗೆ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಷನ್ ಯು ಸೆಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಎ ಐಟಿ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಇನ್ ಹುಬ್ಬಳ್ಳಿ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಬೂಸ್ಟ್ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಮೆಂಟ್ you set up this much industry you provide this much employment we will give you this much tax concession startup policy we are giving tax concession 3 years there is no tax for startups no capital gains tax get for 3 years for startup according to startup policy 2016 so the government is giving lot of concessions this concessions is called tax expenditure tax expenditure is not the expenditure done out of the taxes tax na collect madbekarane there is some concessions given to public industry that is the concept of tax expenditure the expressions exemptions and concessions so this is actually what revenue foregone right if you don't collect the taxes by giving the exemptions the revenue it is a revenue loss for the government so government every year is losing 6 lakhs crore 6 lakh crore to tax exemptions tax exemptions it is losing up to 6 lakh crore why tax expenditure is required i have told you already to promote bal
Singapore, Panama, all these are tax havens. There is no tax or very minimal tax. That is why companies try to go there. So, A, no, there is no tax. First is there is no tax or very less tax in these places. And there is no tax information also. If India goes and asks that which Indian is has invested in your market or your economy, they are not going to give the information. There is no tax information, right? Along with that, they, the, in the tax havens, there is no presence. There is no presence. Andre, see, there, there are companies in the Mauritius. Mauritius only there are companies, lot of companies. But does it mean there is any activity that is taking place there? No. No economic activity is taking place there. Just shell companies. I am going to discuss what is the concept of shell company. There is no any presence. Companies are, do, do not have any presence in these tax havens. They just are going to utilize these tax havens for the purpose of evading taxes. Right? So this is the concept. Next, you have tax paradise. Tax heaven and one day, tax paradise and one day. It is a heaven, heaven paradise. So, Panama and Paradise Papers. So, what is this Panama and Paradise Papers? There, whoever had evaded the taxes, whoever had deposited their ill-gotten money, illegal money in the tax havens, our information got leaked. There was an information that even Amita Bachchan's money was, illegal money was there, but that was not proved later on. So, this made a lot of noise few years back. Panama and Paradise Papers. So, illegal money are deposit money there, our information it is going to divulge. Right? So, this is the concept of Panama and Paradise Papers. So, it is regarding tax evasion and illegal money. Next, the concept of Base erosion and profit shifting. Base erosion and profit. See the name, the word or the statement itself is self-explanatory. What is base erosion and profit shifting? See, base means tax base. Tax base. Suppose Infosys, Infosys is headquartered in India, right? So let's say the tax base of Infosys is India. So in order to evade the taxes, in order to evade the taxes, this so let's say Infosys is evading taxes. Take the example, though, though they don't do it, they will shift the base. Tax base na India in the some other country they are going to shift. Tax base is shifted from India to some other country. So, that is base erosion. Base is getting eroded. Tax base is getting eroded from the domestic or indigenous country. And the profit is shifting. Profit is shifting from domestic arena to international arena or some other country. profit That is shifted to some other country. So, this is the concept of base erosion and profit shifting. So, BEPS. Did you understand the concept BEPS? From India, it is shifted to something else. Base is eroded, profit is shifted. Shift the base, right? And also, this is called as tax planning. There are three things. Tax avoidance, tax planning and also tax evasion. Three things are there. Tax planning is actually good. You plan the taxes. See, you have, you are paying life insurance and medical insurance. For that actually there is no tax. If you have paid the taxes or there is minimal tax. Right? If you have paid the taxes for that, so you can get rebate in your income tax. You can get rebate in your income tax by showing that you have paid so much insurance. Right? So, that is actually tax planning. You plan to reduce your tax expenditure or your tax liability in a reduce model that is tax planning and it is legal. It is legal. Whereas tax avoidance, 
and tax evasion are illegal. Three concepts, only three concepts. Tax planning, tax avoidance and tax evasion. Tax avoidance, avoiding to pay tax. Tax evasion, evade, evade from paying taxes through illegal means. So those two are illegal. Next, the concept of shell company. Shell company. So the shell companies, Andre, these companies do not have any functioning. Hmm? It is just a shell. See, you buy a coconut. You take out the inside uh, that uh, uh, co 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 coconut inside that this thing will be there. No, you take it out. So only the shell will be remaining, right? Only the shell will be remaining. So without that inside material, inside fruit, is the shell any use of any use? No. So similarly, shell company Lee, inside there will be nothing. There will be just a shell. To outsiders, it looks like a company, but inside nothing. So these are fake companies. Fake companies created to evade taxes. To evade taxes. So Mauritius is known to have these shell companies. Next, you have the concept of black money. I have discussed. This BEPS encourages black money. So, when you don't pay the taxes legally, it is actually black money. BEPSLE, there is a black money. And also it leads to moral hazard. Moral hazard means, see, some companies are actually honest. They are in India. They are not doing BEPS. They are properly paying the taxes in India. But some illegal companies are doing BPS and getting lot of profit. So, it is a hindrance for genuine taxpayers. Just like tax amnesty schemes, which creates a moral hazard, BPS also creates moral hazard for genuine taxpayers. Genuine taxpayers, okay, it is going to create a moral hazard. So, it, it might, they might feel that even though being honest, honesty is not rewarded. Right? So, this is the concept of moral hazard. So, how to curb this BEPS? BEPS, now how do we stop? One is there is a OECD BEPS framework. Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It is a majorly a European body, but other developed countries. So, it is a organization of developed countries. Your the BEPS framework, there is a BEPS framework of OECD, right? And also there is a USA FATCA Act. What is the full form of FATCA? You, are, you don't need, need to know. So you just remember to counter BEPS. There is, it, it, it means some financial transaction countering act, something like that. So to counter BEPS, there is UP, USA FATCA Act is there. Along with that you have G20, G20 framework is there to counter BEPS, base erosion, profit shifting, na, counter madake, there is a G20 framework and also there is double taxation avoidance agreement, DTAA is also there to counter BEPS, double taxation, I have told what is double taxation, so, you know, uh, those who do double taxation avoidance, I mean uh, double taxation uh, avoid madake, country, India has signed many agreements, so that is also signed to Curb, base erosion and profit shifting. These are the measures. Okay, we will discuss what is DTAA, GAR and everything. So, double taxation avoidance agreement. Very important. So, this agreement is signed between the countries. It is not a multilateral agreement. Multilateral andra among the countries, among multiple countries. Bilateral means among two countries. So, it is a bilateral agreement between the countries, right? I have told you double taxation and reno. Suppose a company is functioning in India and Singapore, it is taxed both in Singapore. Same income is taxed in both in India and Singapore. In order to avoid that, India there is a signing of double taxation avoidance agreement. As simple as that. So, this double taxation avoidance agreement in the actually the investment is going to increase. Right? Double taxation in the obviously uh, economy will uh, this uh, companies or investors will feel happy and they are going to invest more, right? 
So India has signed double taxation avoidance agreement, had signed double taxation avoidance agreement, 80s ala martare, with Mauritius. It's a tax haven. Ali matili erdu kare tax akbar dunta, India had But this was misused actually, misused by the companies. How did they misuse? What they did was, see, there is company A. It was functioning in India. Hmm? It is not paying any taxes. Or it is paying genuinely the taxes. As let us assume it is genuinely paying the taxes. So, round tripping and reno. What does, see, this company is in India. I. So, what, what does this company, so there is another company, let us say England company. B. It is an England company. Company B. So, here is Mauritius. So, what they do? They are going to uh, invest via Mauritius to India. So, illi the concept of place of effective management and all those things, origin rules also comes. Whereas, this will be considered as Mauritius company because Mauritius is the investment actor. So, what happens? Indians also feel to do this. Indian also, Indians also plan to do this. How do they do this? Indian company will go to Mauritius, set up a shell company, fake company and then from that company they are going to invest in India. Round tripping. The capital goes out of the country and comes back to the country in order to avoid taxes. So because of DTAA, they, it leads to round tripping. In Sumar Vasha, this happened actually for a lot many years. So later what they do? They stop it. We will discuss how uh, it, it gets stopped later on. So these companies, shell box companies are called mailbox companies. Shell companies are called mailbox companies. What is a mailbox? Why it is called a mailbox? See, mailbox is under anche peti ke. You are going to put a mail in that. And somebody will come and take the mail out of it. So actually that box doesn't have any utility per se. Because it just acts as a platform. So this shell company also acts like, it just acts like a platform where money comes and goes. So it is called mailbox companies. India has signed double taxation avoidance agreement with 88 countries. 88 countries, Jyota, India has the double taxation avoidance agreement. Right? Next. Rationalization of DTA, I told you. DTA has lot of disadvantages. Lot of disadvantages are there. So, it needs to be corrected. It needs to be rationalized. How do we rationalize it? How do we rationalize it? Mauritius, we signed a limitation treaty. Limitation of benefit treaty. And we are going to sign in 2016. So, our treaty prakara, what happens after 2017? After 2017, March 31st, we are not going to give you the benefit of DTAA. DTAA ends March 21st or March 31st, 2017 in the DTAA ends and the, this benefit, uh, this DTA agreement na stop Martha. So, but 2017 March 31st, Munche Yavda investment Nadidila, those are grandfathered. Grandfathered under Adike Yenu. Effect agala. Till that date, whatever round tripping, whatever happens, let it happen. Government is least bothered. But after that date, no round tripping, nothing. DTA benefits is limited. So, Ali Vargo Baro Indina, we are doing grandfathering it. Grandfathering it. So, what does a grandfather do? They protect us. Likewise, till March 31st, 2017, whatever the investment is there. Whether it is legal, illegal, that will be protected and the government gives assurance. So next, to 2016, what we are signing? We are signing limitations of benefit treaty, benefit, limitation of benefit. So, the concept of treaty shopping is very, very important. Treaty shopping. So, you know the concept of shopping, right? Shopping means what? You go to a mall or somewhere, wherever you find cheap and best quality, you are going to buy that. So, even these companies, international MNCs or Indian companies, what they do? They also do shopping, treaty shopping or tax shopping. Which country has the least tax? 
they are going to go and shop there. Did you get the concept of treaty shopping? Which country has the least minimum taxes, there they are going to invest. So, this concept of treaty shopping is actually bad. Right? So, treaty shopping is discouraged under LOB, limitation of benefit. And also, this, whatever DTA, it is completely stop. Genuine Mauritius residence is there. Mauritius is there. Mauritius is there. This benefit is there. Genuine residents have the benefit. But not outsiders. England, France, USA cannot root their money or reroot their money via Mauritius. Right? Next, money laundering. Money laundering is stop. I have told you what is money laundering. Havala transactions. Laundering the money from one place to another. Saving it in places where there is least transparency. Yeah? So, limitation of benefits CT also stops the money laundering. These companies launder the money in order to avoid paying taxes. Right? Next, we have the concept of general anti-avoidance rules. GAR. I told you, under DTA, companies avoid paying taxes. Yes? In order to Avoid that avoidance. Companies are avoiding paying taxes. In order to go against that avoidance, we have general anti-avoidance rules. Very, very important. So, under this, what is done? Oh, what is being done? So, those who are avoiding taxes illegally, those who are avoiding taxes illegally, for them, tax benefits are not given. Tax benefits are not Tax expenditure, tax benefits, and concessions, exemptions, and also DTA benefits. All these things are not given to tax avoiders. Tax benefit is denied to avoiders. First point. Next, uh, till March 2017, no GAR. Why? Because grandfathering will happen. Till March 2017, GAR will not apply because till then there is a grandfathering clause, right? Tax benefit, tax benefit is to uh, when does GAR apply? GAR, when does it get applied? If the tax concession is more than 3 crore, you are claiming tax concession of more than 3 crore rupees. Yes? Then it comes under the provision of GAR. Ali orgu up to 3 crore, GAR will not apply. You make a profit of or your taxation is up to 2.5 crore. GAR will not apply. 3 crore in the mail you are taking exemption, then this avoidance rules will come. There will be stringent checking, stringent background check. Are you really avoiding? Are you really claiming the tax benefit? All these things. Right? So, this is done to curb the tax evasion. Tax evasion, Martharala, those who evade the taxes. So, some uh, just like how criminals avoid, avoid, evade police, evade the police from arresting them. Similarly, companies uh, uh, evade the tax. So, GAR Ali, it is going to curb the tax evasion, right? And also, Ili, there is a concept of look through than look at. What is the concept of look at and look through? See, the look at concept, Andre, look at it. Look at it, Andre, you are just looking the outside. If you just look at the outside, there is no illegality because Indian company can go to Mauritius and come back. What is wrong in that? If it is, if British can do it, why can't Indian Santa? Look at concept. But government applies the concept of look through. Look through, you see through it. Actually, there is tax evasion. So, for that, we have to apply the taxes. Anta, this concept of look through will come. So, government, general gar anta bandre, 
you have to know the concept of look through and look at, right? Along with that, you have this, for one famous example is the word of one case. So, in 2008, actually what happens, there will be a company called Vodafone Achisar. Uh, Achisar, uh, SX, Achisar or something is there. So, it was called as H, H U T C H. Achisar SR or something, the name is. So, there used to be that pug dog used to go in the advertisement. So, that is the Ach company. Okay. So, this Ach company got itself uh, sold to Vodafone. So, what they do in order to avoid the taxes, see, illy if they did it within India, if they had signed the agreement, take over, if their company was taken over within India, yeah, if the dilution or transfer of ownership was done within India, there was taxation, they were susceptible to taxes. But in order to avoid the taxes, what they do? Same agreement they are going to sign in outside India. Same agreement they will sign outside India in order to avoid the taxes. But where is the functioning happening? It is happening in India. Actual function happens in India. But just the agreement is signed outside. So, government applies the concept of POEM, place of effective management and imposes taxes on Vodafone. Some crores together of taxes were imposed on Vodafone. So, recently also, uh, one or two years also, the case was running in Supreme Court. Case was running in Supreme Court. I think recently the Supreme Court gave a favorable judgment in uh, for Vodafone. Retrospective taxation. I told you what is retrospective taxation. So, financial rules 2012 prakara, the taxation happens. The rules come in 2012, but transaction has happened in 2008. So, retrospectively, in the date in the, you are applying the tax and the Vodafone had filed a case, right? So, that is the concept of Vodafone case. Next, place of effective management I have discussed. Where the company is effectively managing. Hmm? That is the concept of place of effective Management, this place of effective management concept comes in Finance Act. So, what is a Finance Act? What is a Finance Bill? Appropriation Act, Appropriation Bill. All these things I have discussed in Indian polity. Yes. So, Finance Act 2013 prakara, this concept comes and idrally it is applicable to Indian resident companies. Indian resident companies. If a company is resident in India, if it is functioning in India, then this rules apply. Within the boundary of India, they should be functioning. They should have some work. Then this place of effective management will apply. Right? And it is used to target the shell companies. Shell companies are duplicate companies. Duplicate companies outside. Aduna target madadike this place of effective management, where the function is, is happening. Hmm? You might set up the headquarters somewhere. In that headquarters, there might be some just one table and chair. But where is the actual manufacturing take place, taking place? That is the concept of POEM. So, it is used to target the shell companies. Next, you have OECD and digital tax. This is one example where I am, uh, what I am giving. OECD, I have told you the full form of OECD and digital tax. What is digital tax? Which are the digital companies? So, all this uh, Facebook, Twitter, Apple, all these companies are digital, Microsoft, yeah, all these companies are digital companies upon which digital tax is imposed. So, OECD countries, though, tax evasion, so OECD countries, what they do? They impose a digital tax. They also take up a similar provision of POEM or POEM, POEM. So, they also say where the business is there, their tax should be imposed. Business actual, that their tax should be imposed on the OECD says in the concept of digital tax. Right? Okay. Next, 
tax information exchange agreement tax information how much tax we are paying what is the tax rate what are the companies that are paying tax what are the indian companies that are paying tax in usa what are the us companies that are paying taxes in india as any company evades the taxes what is the tax exemption they have claimed have they stored any illegal money all these tax related information is exchanged as per this agreement tax information exchange agreement right so it leads to international cooperation alwa the cooperation among the countries increase if we do have this agreement alwa so tax cooperation increases among the countries there is a international cooperation according to this agreement so india has signed 21 tax information exchange agreement 21 If if any Indians are uh, Ill got an illegal money and they have signed it, uh, they have saved it in some other country. E twenty one countries or who they have to give the tax information and in in turn our residents normally is that we have to give them tax information. This is the concept of tax information. So I will give you example to better understand this. There is this concept of mutual legal assistance treaty. Mutual legal assistance treaty. according to this treaty what happens uh, there is this concept of extradition 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 andre no indian do does some crime and goes and hides in britain vijay mallya mehul choksky all these people they go and hide in some foreign country we have to extradite him to india that is done as per this mutual legal assistance treaty so legally That is the case. Extradition, that right? Tax only T I E. It is similar. Yes. So and also there is a convention. You can quote this convention when it comes to tax matters. Convention on mutual administrative assistance in tax matters. Convention. It is a convention. It is. It is not an agreement. It is a belief or a rules which we follow generally. Convention on mutual administrative assistance. Administration is going to assist each other in tax matters. Tax matters. If somebody signs this convention, then they are bound to do it. This is the concept. Next, we move towards transfer pricing and APA. I have told you yesterday what is transfer pricing. See, there is a order. Let us take the example of order phone itself. Order phone. and there is indian subsidiary is called vodafone india right or vodafone idea idea is only partnered in india not world over indian company is called vodafone idea yes so what they do andre india dalli tax jasti ide anta they are going to show less profits in india less profits are shown in india Ireland only. Let us say their headquarters is there. They are going to show high profits. Profit source le bekal or else how how are they going to utilize? If you show the profit, then only it is white money. So Ireland only they are going to show huge profit. India only they are going to show less profit. So in order to show the profit, what they do? Certain products, certain things. Andre. See, let us say this company is going to pay for auditors. Vodafone India is going to pay for auditors, yeah, or it is going to spend on something. There are some products. Our products, nella Vodafone, Vodafone uh, Ireland is transformed. And they are going to transfer Vodafone India some product, yes. That product will be sold to Vodafone World. Let us consider or Vodafone Ireland at a very less price. Yes, in order to avoid the taxes, अदन ill sale मार दरे tax जस्ते आगे तला. So they are going to sell it to Vodafone Ireland. अल्ली profit न तोस्तर. So आगे this is called as transfer pricing. Transfer of products from subsidiary to parent 
or parent company to subsidiary in order to avoid taxes, transfer pricing. So, idrally, it is similar to BEPS, base erosion and profit shifting. Hege base erode akta de. Similarly, products are getting eroded from India ala. And also, subsidiary sells goods to parent company or vice versa. I told you. Vice versa. Ivaga, either it may take place in domestic arena or internationally. Domestic or Agbodu, within the sale might take place within India or internationally, right? So these are the two things. So India has a transfer pricing code. With respect to this, India has a transfer pricing code. If you are transferring some goods from your subsidiary to parent or parent to subsidiary, you have to do it according to transfer pricing code. Other outside madre. There will be penalty. So, in Martha, I told you they are shifting the profit, right? They are shifting the profit from India to foreign company in order to avoid taxes. That is why under transfer pricing, they are shifting the profit. Any K corporate tax is high. Corporate tax is high, so less profit is shown. All these points I have told. Yes, and also it is leading to tax evasion and money laundering. India ke loss ha, taxes. And also money is being laundered. Money laundering, Andre. I have told you. Without paying the taxes, illegally you are transferring the money somewhere else. It is leading to money laundering. So, Hagagi, there is a solution for that. That is called Advanced Pricing Agreement. APA. Advanced Pricing Agreement. What is APA, Andre? See, understand the etymology. Etymology, Andre, how, what the word means. Advanced. So, before the selling of goods, before the selling of goods take place, prices will be fixed. Andre, Vodafone India is selling goods to Vodafone Ireland. Before selling of the goods, Vodafone India will contact the revenue department or the finance ministry and fix the rate that I am going to sell the product to my parent company at this rate and you should not come in between. You should not come in between. Rate is fixed. So that is advanced pricing. Pricing is prices is fixed. Advanced pricing agreement. APA. Right? So in the arm's length price or no sweetheart price. Arm's length price. Andre, you can sell your goods to parent company. There is no issue. But that should not be done in such a way in order to avoid taxes. Right? So, Adhike, what this uh, APA says, you treat your parent company just like any other company. See, Vodafone India, Vodafone Ireland, some goods they are selling. Huh? Would they sell the same good to some other company at the same price? No. They are doing it because to avoid taxes, but they might even give free. So, some other company, they will charge the proper money. So, Ahagagi, this according to this APA, they say you treat your parent company from arm's length. Arm's length, and one kai udda. Treat your parent company as some other company and sell the product. Then we don't have any issue. Right? So, arm's length principle. Yes. So, also no sweetheart price. And your parent is not your sweetheart to give it concession or free. So, our principle prakara, you are going to do it. Anta. So, illa nagate, government and business will negotiate. I told you, Vodafone India will negotiate with the finance ministry. So, government to business, there is a negotiation. Ega gadrinda, what it does, there is certainty to taxpayers, companies, ye, there is proper certainty or sure, they will have proper confidence that government will not go against us. Amele, they are not going to come and file cases against us because we have already made the agreement. Anta. So, this is the concept of advanced price agreement and each agreement is signed for 5 years. Agreements are signed for a term of 5 years. Yes? Okay. Next, you have the concept of Tobin tax. Tobin tax. What is Tobin tax? Tobin tax ali. Foreign exchange transaction, see, foreign exchange is coming into India, comes to India, 
and foreign exchange goes goes out of india so both on the foreign exchange coming into india and for go, foreign exchange foreign money going out of india there should be some tax anta heltane idana james tobin nanono devise martane tobin tax foreign exchange mele transaction mele we have to impose this tax why because foreign exchange is called hot money hot money andre it will come it will come with same fast with the same fast it is going to disappear at the same speed it is going to come with the same speed it is going to disappear from the country so in order to curb that in order to curb that speculation in speculative investment tobin tax is imposed tobin tax so check speculative flow we are going to invest so long term only if you somebody is investing if somebody is investing for 15 years 20 years their money into india then tobin tax need not be applied but short term yes short term only it is going to a uh, short term only it is going to lead to what speculative investment so tobin tax should be imposed anta heltare so this will reduce the exchange rate volatility exchange rate volatility means what exchange rate that is 1 dollar is 75 rupees yeah so what if the dollar will be 60 rupees today 80 rupees tomorrow 90 rupees day after and again comes back to 70 there is volatility right volatility and the price is not fixed it is moving yeah so Avoid that volatility. Yava volatile agate. Do do pata pata the bharta idi pata pata it is going out. Then there will be volatility. Other is speculative investment illa andre volatility will not be there. There will be reduction in volatility. Yes. Okay. So it is applicable twice. When the when it is applicable once when the money comes into India and once when when the money goes out of India. So. why this tobin tax is important south asian crisis i told you south east asian tiger economies 1977 so entire economy was dependent on foreign money foreign capital suddenly 1977 us interest rate gets hike all the money goes out so in order to curb that south east asian crisis reethi crisis aagbardu anta tobin tax is imposed yes and also india doesn't prefer this tax why india doesn't prefer this tax see first of all foreign money coming to india is needed we need foreign money adra mele if you are imposing tobin tax foreign money will come not come at all so india doesn't prefer this tobin tax but uh, some countries are imposing tax on idu uh, financial transactions mele financial transaction tax some financial transactions mele foreigners do some financial transaction there they are imposing this ftt that is a form of tobin tax and also it is called robin hood tax robin hood tax and what used to robin used to used to do take money from rich give it to poor so r e t it is called take money from foreign investors and give it to domestic investors so it is also called robin hood tax india dali we don't impose it directly but indirectly we are imposing you know stt matte ctt security transaction tax and commodity transaction tax i told you securities andre shares equity bonds alli transaction andre there we are imposing taxes commodities just like share commodity li transaction andre we are imposing commodity transaction tax that is a form of tobin tax in india next you have pigovian tax pigovian tax andre pollution mele if you are putting a tax 
ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಪುಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಎ ಪಿಗೋವಿಯನ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಫಾಸಿಲ್ ಫ್ಯೂಯಲ್ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಸೊ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಲಿ ವೆಹಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ತಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಹಾಕ್ಬೇಕು ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಬಗರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪಾಯಿಲಿಂಗ್ ದ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಯಾ ಸೊ ಪಿಗೋವಿಯನ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದೋಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೋಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸಸ್ ವೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಾಲಿಟಿ there is negative outcome of that activity so we have carbon tax carbon tax carbon tax is there in india so that is a so carbon emission cess anta collect martivi we collect this cess carbon emission cess that is a pigovian tax you buy a vehicle in delhi they they collect carbon emissions is yeah that is a pigovian tax then it is based on the concept of polluter pays you are polluting the environment you pay for it pigovian tax is based on polluter pays principle yes so uh, this is with respect to taxation now we will move towards goods and services tax goods and services tax 2017 it was introduced in uh, india so it is based on the principle of one nation one taxation system and it applies to indirect taxes only indirect taxes only so uh, products if you are going to buy there will be cgst sgst they will be shown both are equal cgst jasti sgst kadme irala no both are equal if cgst is 5 5 rupees sgst will 5 rupees so it is made why to simplify the tax process. earlier what used to happen every state had different taxes vat anta ittu vat every state used to have different taxes one product you buy see even today see is petrol under gst no so even today if you go to tamil nadu osur border if you go to tamil nadu the petrol price is different compared to bangalore so everywhere the prices are different so in order to stop the discrimination in order to make create one nation one market one nation one tax one nation one market we have bought in this uh, goods and services tax there were multiplicity of taxes multiplicity custom tax custom duty additional custom duty excise duty additional excise duty, special uh, excise duty yeah service tax sales tax vat entertainment tax octroi so many taxes were there actually people used to get confused never ever anyone can question why are you imposing this tax on us because first of all it is confusing a tax yade ide anta there is to be a list product e tax is to e now only two lines cgst this much sdst this much multiplicity of taxes multiple taxes is so that is why that was removed one next cascading effect cascading effect andre see you are buying a car assume you are buying a car okay you are buying a car illi when you are buying a car first what uh, what it is needed first iron is needed iron ಐರನ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಹಾಕ್ತಾರೆ ರಬ್ಬರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೀಡೆಡ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ದ ಟೈರ್ಸ್ ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಹಾಕ್ತಾರೆ ಅಸೆಂಬ್ಲಿ ವೈರ್ಗಳು ಬೇಕು ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಹಾಕ್ತಾರೆ ಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಈಸ್ ನೀಡೆಡ್ ಫೈಬರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೀಡೆಡ್ ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಹಾಕ್ತಾರೆ ಸಾಫ್ಟ್ವೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೀಡೆಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ಲೈಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ನೀಡೆಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಪುಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅಸೆಂಬ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡೋ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಾಫಿಟ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಲೇಬರ್ ಕೂಲಿ ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಹಾಕ್ತಾರೆ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇ ಸೆಲ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೇ ಪುಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಇಲ್ ಬಿ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಸಿ ವಾಟ್ ಐಮ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಲೇಬರ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಸೇ ಐರನ್ ಐರನ್ ಚಾಸಿಸ್ ಚಾಸಿಸ್ ಚಾಸಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ ಚಾಸಿ ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಯು ಆರ್ ಪುಟ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಇಯರ್ isn't it unfair that you are putting the tax on the same thing again here 
ಫೈನಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಚಾಸಿಸ್ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ ಆಗಿರಲ್ವಾ ಇಲ್ಲು ಯು ಆರ್ ಪುಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಚಾಸಿಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲು ಯು ಆರ್ ಪುಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಚಾಸಿಸ್ ಸೊ ಏನಾಗ್ತಿತ್ತು ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಗೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಕ್ಯುಮುಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಈಚ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ರಾ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಇಂದ ಅಸೆಂಬ್ಲಿ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಅಸೆಂಬ್ಲಿ ಇಂದ ಪೇಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಪೇಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಂದ ಶೋರೂಮ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಶೋರೂಮ್ ಇಂದ ಕನ್ಸೂಮರ್ ಹೇಗೆ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಪೋಸ್ ಆಗಿರೋ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಆಡ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಅದೇ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಯಾಸ್ಕೇಡೆಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾಸ್ಕೇಡೆಡ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಲೆವೆಲ್ಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಯು ಡು ಗೆಟ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಯಾಸ್ಕೇಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ದೆನ್ ವೇರಿಯೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸೇಲ್ಸ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುನಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಯು ಬೈ ಎ ಕಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಪಾಂಡಿಚೇರಿ ಯು ಬೈ ಎ ಕಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರ್ ದ ಪ್ರೈಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟಿಟ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಪಾಂಡಿಚೇರಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲಿ ಅಡ್ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಟೆರಿಟರಿ ಯೂನಿಯನ್ ಟೆರಿಟರಿ ಸೊ ದ ಪ್ರೈಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲೆಸ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಕನ್ಸೂಮರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟಿಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಅಡ್ವಾಂಟೇಜಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟಿಟ್ ಅನ್ಫೇರ್ ಎಸ್ ಸೊ ಟು ಕರ್ಬ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ಶನ್ಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಯೂ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ಶನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದೇರ್ ಕನ್ಸೂಮರ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ಅದರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ವೇರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ yeah and also uh, south india delhi uh, the tax that you used to get collected in south india is huge all these tax were spent in north india isn't it exempting the north india from taxes yeah so all this uh, along with that slabs tax slab tax slab means the rate of tax Re- the rate at which tax is imposed imposed is called a tax slab tax slab used to differ across the states one state or one slab idre inno state al inno slab iru that is there and also there was lot of tax evasion lot of tax evasion because of all these reasons gst law was brought in gst law was brought in and the amendment act is 101st constitutional amendment act 101st constitutional amendment act martivi along with that we will do bring in cgst act sg cgst act and igst act central will bring these two statutory provisions and one constitutional amendment along with that states will bring in sgst act state good services act na every state will promulgate or pass right short history of gst gst munche en ittu one earlier there was a concept of vat value added tax this was brought in by manmohan singh the greatest economist of india vat and what used to they used to do uh vat only value added tax i told you no from each level value is getting added right illi bari chassis idido illi products assembly agirutte illi painting agutte every level value is getting added that was tried to be cascading of effect was tried to be addressed through vat ಇದನ್ನ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮಾಡಿಫೈಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಟ್ ಅಂತ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಮಾಡಿಫೈಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಸೆನ್ ವ್ಯಾಟ್ ಅಂತ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿತ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ಅಪಾನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನುಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಚರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾಟ್ ಅಬ್ಕಾರಿ ಇಲಾಖೆ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ಕೋಹಾಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಮ್ಯಾನುಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಚರಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಸೆನ್ ವ್ಯಾಟ್ ಅಂತ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಬಟ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸೇಲ್ಸ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಯು ಸೇಲ್ ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಇಂಪೋಸ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದೇ ಡೂ ದೇ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಕಾಲಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಟ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಇದಾಗ್ಬೇಕ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬಿಡುದು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಸೆನ್ ವ್ಯಾಟ್
simplified tax process na simplify madadike we have bought in the gst along with that to increase the tax base to increase the tax base we have bought in the andre see before gst i told you lot of products were outside taxation so now because of gst the base is increased lot of products which were not taxed are now taxed and to increase the beyond c what is beyond c i have told not fiancy beyond c beyond c means when growth increases tax should increase tax collection should increase along with growth with the tax increases that is called tax beyond c right tax beyond c increases costs will come down costs cascading effect now if we remove for whom it is advantageous consumers it is advantageous because they are going to get the product at less price yes costs next competitive export it is going to make the export competitive product idu idu eno prices kadme adre definitely export competitiveness will increase then also it will curb the black money gst will curb the black money these are the needs of the uh, gst nature of gst what is the nature it is a comprehensive law what do you mean by comprehensive comprehensive means all included all the taxes are included now consumer doesn't have any confusion cgst sgst yes that's all is a, is the gst apply applicable on petrol no is it applicable on export no gst is not applicable on export export and import mele gst illa export and import we are still using customs duty and exports duty yes okay it is applicable only within india next nature it is a multi stage tax multi stage i told you the production multi stage every stage the tax get added consumer finally pays so ಇವರು ಕಬ್ಬಣನ ತಗೊಳ್ಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಐರನ್ನ ತಗೊಳ್ಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಇವರು ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಪೇ ಮಾಡಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಅಗೇನ್ ಈ ಚಾರ್ಸಿಸ್ ನ ಬೈ ಮಾಡೋಕೆ ಈ ಕಂಪನಿ ಅವನು ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಪೇ ಮಾಡ್ತಾನೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಐರನ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಇವರಿಗೆ ದ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗಿವ್ ಇನ್ಪುಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಕ್ರೆಡಿಟ್ ಯು ಹವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಪೇಡ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಯು ಹವ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಪೇಡ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪೇ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪೇ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯೂಮರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪೇ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಗೆ ಡಬಲ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಎರಡೆರ ಕಡೆಯಿಂದ ಸೊ in order to stop that producer will get input tax credit itc input tax credit na kodtare andre excess tax collection agirutalla illu collect agirutte tax illu collect aithe illu collect aithe illi illi final ago collect agutte so these are all excess tax government ge because it is already collected once here why are you collecting everywhere so urige government will give input tax credit itc yes that is one thing next it is destination based suppose the product is being manufactured in karnataka it is sold in tamil nadu so the tax is imposed in tamil nadu not karnataka it is destination based then the burden of tax burden of tax will not fall on the producer it falls on the consumer right tax entire burden we have to bear producers mele ಏನು ಬರ್ಡನ್ ಇರಲ್ಲ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ಪುಟ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಕ್ರೆಡಿಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಯು ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡೆಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡೆಡ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಗೈನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನುಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಚರಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಯು ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಗೇನ್ ಪ್ರಾಫಿಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಫಿಟ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಟು ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಬಟ್ our market the more and more production will happen destinational products sell aagta ide but production alli there will be lot of production obviously right if tamil nadu is a destination state our products are selling there and they are getting more profit they are getting more tax because of karnataka product they are going to promote karnataka product there right so avaga our market will increase that is the first thing next second thing is karnataka manufacturers get they will get input tax credit input tax credit they will get it will not go to tamil nadu and the third thing is 
IGST. See when the product Karnataka le manufacture agi Karnataka le sale adre, then CGST and IG, uh, CGST and SGST will follow. Apply. CGST and SGST. Adene, the product gets manufactured in Karnataka and gets sold in Andhra Pradesh or Tamil Nadu. Then CGST and IGST will apply. IGST, at least SGST apply. Agal. Yeah. So, he IGST it is collected by the center. A IGST na, they are going to give to Karnataka. Because you are manufacturing, so you take it. And so, that is the benefit for the manufacturing state. I told you CGST is there, IGST is there, SGST. What is SGST, IGST, CGST I have discussed. Next, under and constitutional amendment pakara, we do it. Right? GST and center state financial relations. Center state financial relations. See, according to the constitution, 7th schedule, there is proper division of subjects. Union list, state list, concurrent list. Union list items, only the center can import, impose taxes. State list subjects, only the states can impose taxes. Right? Similarly, illu kuda, illi, illu kuda, center state ko financial relations. Are. But illi, illi, there is one catch. What is the catch, Andrea? See, earlier it was easy. Central list to center or tax akkoloru, illi state or akkoloru. Now, same product, CGST is also applying, SGST is also applying. See, earlier only sales so, idhidre, say, say, state list product idhre, only say state used to impose a taxes, center had no role. State is central list idhre, only center used to impose taxes. But now on the same product, both the taxes are getting imposed. So, constitutionally, there is no provision for this. Same product mele, center of state to ibru. What to get tax akko do constitution provision illa. Adhikke what they do under 101st constitutional amendment, they will bring in an article called 246A. Amendment prakara, they bring in an article 246A and an article na maadthare. According to this article, both center and state can impose the taxes on the same products, whether it is in state list or union list, doesn't matter. According to this article, right? Pre-GST position, what was there? I told you, there was excise duty, sales tax, central sales tax, services tax, customs duty, additional customs duty, yes. And also, if, uh, uh, there used to be custom, additional customs duty, all these taxes are there earlier. So many taxes, right? And also entertainment tax, octroi, yeah, all these taxes were there earlier. So, all these things are reduced to just three, two to three taxes, CGST, IGST, SGST. GST council, see earlier center tax used to be center decided by center, state tax used to be decided by the states. Now, both are deciding the taxes. So, which is the authority which is going to decide? Which is the authority? Center state mix on authority Rebecca. Because both are imposing the taxes, both should decide. That authority is the GST council. GST council is the authority. Yes. So, according to this GST council, see, GST council, it is a constitutional body because constitutional amendment, just like 246A, they bring in 279A, 279A article na tandi, GST council na maadthare, who, what is the representation of GST council, there will be union finance minister who is the chairman, then union minister of state for revenue and all the states finance ministers, finance ministers and also the ministers of finance from the union territory of Delhi, Puducherry and Jammu and Kashmir. This is the composition of GST council. Either voting, you know, center will have one third voting. No percent vote it one third voting is done by center and two third voting is done by states together. Amele, generally it works on the principle of consensus. It works on the principle of consensus. And the Mulka, they can 
they arrive at a solution but but uh, now recent times some issues are happening between center and state that is why they are adhering to voting voting again they are depending on voting principle yes okay so uh, rates what are the rates there are five slabs what are the five slabs zero percent five percent twelve percent eighteen percent twenty eight percent these are the five slabs zero 5, 12, 18 and 28. These are the 5 slabs under which taxes are imposed. Then there are some exemptions also. Exemptions. What are the exemptions? Suppose 40 lakh ginta, your turnover is less than 40 lakh. Your business, you are doing a business. If the turnover is less than 40 lakh, then you are exempted from paying GST. 40 lakh in the kadame idre, there is a uh, exemption from GST. And also, uh, that is one thing. Uh, and also, exemptionally, actually, one more uh, concept. Electricity, petroleum, all are exempted from it. GST council cannot decide on petroleum and electricity, real estate, all these things, aviation, turbine, fuel, diesel. GST council cannot decide. Then there is a limit. They start, impose the limit. Andre, this product, only this much should be the taxation limit. It cannot exceed the taxation limit. Anta. They impose the limit and also they impose the bindingness. See, whatever the GST council decides, it is binding. GST council ain't decide, it is binding. On the all the states and center. Next, members have told you who are the members. Right? Next. So, it is getting uh, too much congested. Let me clear it. Okay. Constitutional Amendment Act 101. 2016. Changes in Madhuru. Constitutionally. I told you. The changes. 246A article was brought in. 279A article was brought in. These were the changes in the constitution because of introduction of gst yes so these two changes and also there is one change with respect to article 269a 269a deals with services service tax so service tax now it comes under gst so 269a stands abolished so these three changes right next voting in the gst council i told you it is based on consensus majorly it is based on consensus and there is weightage the weightage is two third one third two third for all the states combined together one third exclusively for the center then what are the functions functions and subsuming the taxes i told you now there were so many taxes everything is subsumed into cgst or sgst now subsuming is done by this gst council Exemption of taxes. What are the taxes that are, I mean, what are the products that are exempted from GST? That is, uh, that is mandated by the GST council. What are the products that are exempted? Uh, as of now, I told you, crude oil, all those things. Next, laws, GST laws, CGST, IGST. SGST laws, Adramel recommendation kodutte GST council. Turnover, I told you, 40 lakh in the kadame idre, there is no GST. That is told by the GST council. Along with that, it decides the slabs. Slabs, either slab idiyala. It can increase the slabs or decrease the slab or fix the price of the particular slab. That is one thing. Then, disasterally, it is going to collect more taxes gst council enaru disaster aitu cyclone aitu earthquake aitu landslide aitu volcano aitu in under all these conditions gst can impose excess taxes in order to solve the disaster crisis right along with that northeast ge illi si turnover illi 40 lakh idre gst Exemption no, only 20 lakh is the GST exemption. Turnover 20 lakh, they need not pay any GST. 
Yes? Okay. Next, petroleum. Petroleum products, the whenever GST council decides, then only the taxation will happen on petrol. GST council will decide on that. And also, it decides on the disputes. Disputes between states and states. Disputes between center and states with respect to financial matters is decided by the GST council. And also, it awards compensation. Why there is compensation? Actually, there is a proper GST Compensation Act 2017. According to which, states are, center is mandated to give 5 years compensation to states because of which center has imposed additional cess. Compensation cess and imposed upon consumers for 5 years. Why this compensation? I told you, Karnataka is selling a product, Tamil Nadu is buying the product. Here, Karnataka, there is no tax. It is not getting any tax. So, all these states, so Karnataka, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, huh? all these are manufacturing states. They are manufacturing. They are good in manufacturing. So, they, when they are bound to lose tax because it is a destination-based tax. These manufacturing states are bound to lose tax revenue. In order to compensate the tax revenue, this Compensation Act was passed. We will compensate for 5 years. Center will compensate for 5 years. But within that 5 year, the center, I mean the states who are the producer states, they have to find a way. They have to find a way in order to get more taxes. They have to find new resources for taxes. 5 years they can sit on the centers as a assurance, right? Next, we have the concept of tax slaps and G under GST. I have discussed the tax slaps. 0, 12, 18, 0, 5, 12, 18 and 28. Then, taxes merged into GST. I told that one also. Excise duty, service tax, customs duty, sales tax, entertainment tax, octroi. All these things are merged into GST. Next, GST and revenue neutral rate. What is GST and revenue neutral rate? So see, uh, under GST, see, <coughs> sorry, see, under GST, government is getting some revenue, hmm? earlier they were getting some revenue, some let us say some less revenue, now they are getting more revenue. So, this revenue neutral say, rate says that you should not get more revenue because it will be burden for consumers. So, you should devise the GST in such a way that the revenue is neutral. Revenue water you are getting is neutral. So, setting the, the GST rate at such a rate that you are not getting any excess revenue, no excess revenue compared to previous. This is the Revenue neutral rate, right? Re uh, uh, revenue uh, rate is bandre. There is one is standard rate is there. The standard rate at which taxes are imposed is called uh, standard rate. Then there is fitment rate. Fitment rate andre it is excess revenue. Excess revenue bandre. Other rate na increase madi excess revenue bandre. Then it is called fitment rate. Revenue neutral rate andre. Government is getting, no, not getting any revenue, excess revenue, that is revenue neutral rate, right? So, this is the concept of revenue neutral rate. GST in the excess revenue should not come to the government. So, that rate is called revenue neutral rate. This is the concept. Next, dual GST, dual GST, I told you, CGST, SGST, that is the dual GST, yes? Then, GST compensation to states act, I told you, what is advantage, see, GST, uh, GST is advanced, advantageous for consuming states. Consuming states gate is not producing states gate is not going to help. That is why in order to compensate for the excess, the, the central government has levied, levied additional cess. It has levied additional cess in order to compensate the states. Right? Along with that, 
GST and cross empowerment. What is the concept of GST and cross empowerment? Who is collecting the GST? Anta. Who will collect the GST? So, do you think SGST is collected by state? CGST is collected by center? No. See, why this cross empowerment, Andre? See, let, let us say CGST is collected by the center and SGST is collected by the state. So, the person who is paying the GST has to interact with state authorities also, central authorities also. Central tax department go ogi has to pay the taxes, state tax department go ogi has to pay the SGST. So, in order to reduce that, double interaction is bardu. Double, there should be only single interaction, single window. So, what they have decided is in order to reduce the interaction, they have fixed the limit. Up to 1.5 crore, Virgo, the limit, if, if the limit is up to 1.5 crore, below 1.5 crore income error, the GST will be collected by states. 90% of the cases, 1.5 crore income, 90% of the cases, the GST will be handled by the states. Rest 10% will be handled by the center. Rest 10% will be handled by the center, right? More than 1.5 crore is the turnover or the tax which is being imposed. Then it is handled by both the center and state in the 50-50 ratio. 50% cases will go to center, 50% will go to states. This is the concept of GST and cross empowerment. Yes? Next, anti-profiteering clause of GST. What is anti-profiteering clause? See, because of GST, because of GST, actually, it actually profited a lot to the retailers. GST was a lot of benefit. Why? Because they are getting input tax credit. They are not paying any taxes. We are paying the taxes, indirect tax. More than that, they are, they are getting input tax credit. Moreover, that because of GST, their taxes income, I mean, their income has increased. Right? So, what the government says, this benefit, what you are getting, retailers or wholesalers, sellers, what the, the benefit you are getting, you should pass it to the consumers. You have to reduce your price. Anta. So, if you are not reducing the price, then it will lead to excess profiteering, just like revenue neutral rate. Tara. Illi, uh, retailers are getting excess profit. So, you have to pass on your benefit to the consumers. If you don't pass it, you will be put, there will be a penalty for it. We will impose a penalty and the government has won. That is the anti-profiteering clause. The retailers or wholesalers should not make any illegal profit. They should reduce the rate. That is the concept. Next, to manage this, there is a National Anti-Profiteering Authority. National Anti-Profiteering Authority. This checks the sellers. You can suppose, let's say before GST, you are for a product. Let us say uh, some deodorant. You are, uh, you are paying 100 rupees. So, after GST... You are paying the same 100 rupees. However, before GST, the product used to come to the retailer for 80 rupees. Now, it is coming for 70 rupees for him. So, he is benefiting excess 10, 10 rupees. When you get to know, you can complain to... They will impose the penalty. Next, GST network. So, it is the backbone of the GST. GST collection now. Where all GST is collected, everything is managed by the GST network. Earlier, it is a no, not for profit organization. It is a not for profit company. It is registered under Companies Act 2013. So, Section 2018, GST network is registered. It is the backbone network of GST. You have to pay, go and pay GST. Where do you pay? You go to GST network. Yes, 
earlier the government was owning just 49%, 51% was with private entities. Now they have taken over 100%, 100% is with government. Now recent change with respect to GST network. It is the backbone network, right? Settlement mechanism, it has a settlement mechanism. What is settlement mechanism? So you are a consumer, you are a producer, I mean seller. You take the money from consumer, you are going to pay the GST. For a producer or a seller, you are paying to paying the GST via the GST network. GST network, you are paying the GST. Immediately within days, you will get the income tax, input tax credit. Whatever the excess tax you have paid Allah, that you will get as input tax credit within days, within some days. So this settlement is also done by the GST network. It is automated. It is automated, right? So this was done actually by Infosys, GST network, right? Infosys or Marathar. Then GST and Petro products, I told you, petrol products. Whenever the GST council decides, they can impose tax on the petrol products. So, Ivaga petrol products only. So, now how much is the tax? Petrol mele. So, there is more than 50% of tax on petrol. Petrol is coming at coming to India at 50 rupees. We are selling it at 75 rupees. 50% tax on petrol. Why states do not want petrol to be under GST? Why? See, under GST, which is the maximum rate? Highest rate under GST, highest tax lab, 28%. So, now they are getting 50% tax states. 50% states are 50% our after central. States are getting 50% tax. Oh, sorry, sorry. 50% including both center and states, right? So, if you put either less strict to the government you get center or get approx state get approximately 30 percent they are getting 20 percent goes to center yeah so suppose the states they agree to the gst the maximum that can be put is 28 percent state gets by the since it is equal states will get just 14 percent so 30 percent only 14 per day their, their petrol revenue is going to reduce less than half that is why states are opposing GST on petrol products. That is the reason. So, what is the mechanism now? We have value added tax on petrol. Petrol, we have value added tax. So, that is why these petrol prices are different from different states. So, it is good. It is good from consumer perspective that GST is imposed on petrol because it is going to reduce the cost for consumers. Yes? Okay. They can impose some extra sales. They can put some 28% tax on uh, petrol. They can put 10% extra stress. Say let's say they are you know, carbon emission session tax on petrol. Right? By like that they can. Because it is going to make the petrol price uniform. Throughout the Delhi, the petrol price is almost 10 to 15 rupees less than Karnataka. Yeah? Okay. Next, goods and service tax. You have the GST benefits. GST benefits small entrepreneurs and small traders. Yes, it does benefit. Earlier what happens? Nobody, the small traders, petty traders never paid the GST. They never paid it. Now they are paying the GST because they are benefiting. They are getting input tax credit. They are getting input tax credit and according to GST, their profits have also increased. Due to various reasons. Yes. Uh, ITC is one reason. So small traders, I told you up to 40 lakh, there is no tax. Composition scheme. See 40 lakh astena GST. After that, up, after 40 lakh, up to 1 crore. 1 to 1.5 crore. Up to 1.5 crore. Your turnover is 1.5 crore. You need not pay excess GST. Your GST is fixed under 1% aste. Up to 1.5 crore turnover idre per year, your GST is just 1% under the composition scheme. Compose, compose everything. See, up to 1.5 crore, 1.5 crore turnover, there are a lot of products. Small, small bangles, 
ಇಯರ್ ರಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಪೆನ್ ಪೆನ್ಸಿಲ್ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆಲ್ಲ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕೀಪ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಟಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅದರಿಂದ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ರೆವಿನ್ಯೂ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ದೇ ಡೂ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಸೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹಾವ್ ಒನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಫೈವ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ವರ್ತ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ಓವರ್ ಯು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಪೇ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನೋ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ನೋ ಮೋರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಷನ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ನೋ ಆಡಿಟಿಂಗ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಓಕೆ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಹಸ್ ರೆಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಹಸ್ ರೆಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಕಂಪ್ಲೈ ವಿತ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸೇಷನ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಜಿಎಸ್ಟಿ ಬಂದ್ಮೇಲೆ you 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 earlier they have to go to the tax authorities pay the tax authorities bribe them hmm? tax rate should be different so many paperwork lot of things and your time will also get wasted now just at the click of the button you can pay the taxes so compliance quota has reduced small traders it has benefited petty traders for them it has made i told you see 90% of indian economy is informal economy those companies which are not registered after coming so many of the small traders traders after coming of gst they have registered so it has helped the economy to uh, uh, turn from formal economy sorry informal economy to formal economy i have told you what is the difference between formal and informal in my earlier classes next you have the concept of a harmonized system of uh, nomenclature in gst see there are variety of products how do you identify the individual product just like you are given your aadhar every product suppose let's say bangles or let's say pen the pen is given a pen pens every pen is given one uh, nomenclature hsn code that if the, this is the hsn code the product is pen anta and the tax is different ಕಂಪ್ನಿ ಮೇಲೆಲ್ಲ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಇಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪೆನ್ ಎಚ್ ಎಸ್ ಎನ್ ಕೋಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಂಪೋ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಡ್ ಇನ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಸೊ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಇದನ್ನ ಮೊದಲು ಬಂದಿದ್ದು ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸೇಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ದೀಸ್ ಕಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಅಥಾರಿಟೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಶಿಯೇಟ್ ದ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ದೇ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಚ್ ಎಸ್ ಎನ್ ಕೋಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ದೆನ್ ಫೈವ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ where bought under hsn code this product they cannot say see the packages will be sealed export import alli they wouldn't know what is inside so adr mele hsn code print madirtare so as soon as they get to know see this is this code this bag contains rubber this pro bag contains bag leather bag something like that they will it is a leather product so hsn code world so it is a six digit code world alli more than 5000 products are under hsn code next gst and composition scheme i already told you composition means 1% tax up to 1.5 crore turnover 40 40 lakh mele 1.5 crore kelage next e way bill see earlier suppose a product we being shipped by goa to tamil nadu they have to pass through check post of goa karnataka tamil nadu all these check post the check post buggers used to take money corruption they used to amele one more thing this in, in this check post there will be long long queues big big queues in order to clear the check post only you have to wait for one or two hour nam cars ela they used to leave early some 10 to 15 minutes but lorries they have to wait for hours together in order to clear the check post so that is why all the check post inspectors have become crorepatis crorepatis yeah so this e way bill e way bill andre as soon as you 5 km this is not 50 km uh, i think yes it is more than 50 km yes if you are shipping a product more than 50 km illinda vasur it is more than 50 km so immediately if your product as soon as you bill na ready maartta idange e way bill bandibudutte so that driver has to carry this e way bill along with him whoever stops check post rtg or rto police whoever stops he has to show that e way bill that i have the license to carry this product from this particular state to this particular state e way bill immediately gets 
ಜನರೇಟೆಡ್ ವಯ ಇ ವೇ ಬಿಲ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ ಎಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಎಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಅಂತ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆರ್ ಎಫ್ ಐ ಡಿ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸಿ ಐ ಡಿ ಇ ವೇ ಬಿಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ ಎಫ್ ಐ ಡಿ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಸ್ಕ್ಯಾನಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಎಫ್ ಐ ಡಿ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನೋ ದ ಇನ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಆರ್ ಎಫ್ ಐ ಡಿ ಇ ವೇ ಬಿಲ್ ಆರ್ ಎಫ್ ಐ ಡಿ ಇರುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಸ್ಕ್ಯಾನಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಇ ವಿಲ್ ನೋ ವೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕಂಪನಿ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಎಫ್ ಐ ಡಿ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೆಡ್ರಲಿಸಮ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೆಡ್ರಲಿಸಮ್ ಫೆಡ್ರಲಿಸಮ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ಡಿವಿಜನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪವರ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಲು ಕೂಡ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿವಿಜನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಸಿ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಐ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಿಂಕ್ ವಿತ್ ಫೆಡ್ರಲಿಸಮ್ ದೋ ಇಟ್ ದೋ ವಿ ಸೇ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಒನ್ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಅಂತ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸೇಯಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಬಯ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಒನ್ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಬಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಇನ್ ಸಿಂಕ್ರನೈಸೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಫೆಡ್ರಲಿಸಮ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಿಂಕ್ರನೈಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಫೆಡ್ರಲಿಸಮ್ ಈಸಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪುಷಿಂಗ್ ಅಸ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಕೋಆಪರೇಟಿವ್ ಫೆಡ್ರಲಿಸಮ್ ಕೋಆಪರೇಟಿವ್ ಫೆಡ್ರಲಿಸಮ್ ಹತ್ರ ನಮ್ಮನ್ನ ಪುಷ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೆಡ್ರಲಿಸಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಿಸ್ಕಾಲ್ ಅಟಾನಮಿ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ಫಿಸ್ಕಾಲ್ ಅಟಾನಮಿ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ಫಿಸ್ಕಾಲ್ ಅಟಾನಮಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅಟಾನಮಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಟಾನಮಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಫಿಸ್ಕಾಲ್ ಅಟಾನಮಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಫೈನಾನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಸಿ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಂಪೋಸ್ ಅ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನೇನ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಎಷ್ಟ್ ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೂ ದೇ ಕುಡ್ ಯು ಪುಡ್ ದ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದೇ ವಾಂಟ್ ನೌ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಡಿಸೈಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಫಿಸ್ಕಾಲ್ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಈ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಸ್ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಒನ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಓಟ್ ಬಟ್ ರೂಲಿಂಗ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ರೂಲಿಂಗ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಕೊಲ್ಯೂಡ್ ಆದ್ರೆ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಪಾಸ್ ದ ಬಿಲ್ ಈಸಿಲಿ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಫಿಸ್ಕಾಲ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಂಪಿಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಫೈನಾನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ನೌ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ನೋ ಕಾಂಪನ್ಸೇಷನ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವೋಟಿಂಗ್ ಪವರ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಷನ್ ದೆನ್ ಡಿಸಿಜನ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಲ್ಲೂ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಸಿಜನ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೆ ಬಟ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅಪೋಸಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರೈಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಫೈವ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ಟು ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ಸ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಟುಡೇ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ಸ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಫೈವ್ ರೇಟ್ಸ್ ಫೈವ್ ರೇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಜಿ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ
you have the minimum alternate tax the concept of minimum alternate tax so what is minimum alternate tax under minimum alternate tax see there are there are certain companies there are certain companies they take i told you tax expenditurally there are lot of exemptions lot of exemptions are there lot of concessions are there so certain companies what they what they do scz scz alone there is lot of concessions concessions nmiz alone there are lot of concessions export oriented units only agricultural processing units only certain companies what they do they take all these concessions and show zero book profit zero book profit andre they have profit but they show that everything is exempted from tax so we are not paying any tax on the zero book profit they are going to show and they are companies that it is called zero tax companies zero tax companies so upon the zero tax companies whatever the tax that is imposed that is minimum so avaga zero tax we cannot definitely allow zero tax companies there should be some tax anta company which shows zero book profit upon which what the tax we are imposing that is minimum alternative tax minimum alternative tax so the last concept of the day is rajaswa gyan sangam rajaswa means tax in hindi it is mean tax gyan sangam andre it's a intellectual congregation tax authority is the intellectual congregation yar yar bartare idralli everybody ministry of finance will have representative rbi will have its representative amele idu direct tax directorate of direct tax directorate of indirect tax everybody will come here in this sangam in this other olde resort there they can conduct this they they conduct knowledge exchange intellectual exchange that they are going to discuss various things how taxes can be impo- improved anta so this is the concept of rajaswa gyan sangam tomorrow i will discuss the terms some terms i have to discuss before moving into banking banking sector in india yes okay so if you have any doubts please put it in the comment section or you can reach us to our uh, through our telegram channel right so please make good use of the classes and take maximum benefit out of it please take good care of your health let us meet tomorrow jai hind thank you